All right, so I'm going to go back to this to this window here, and I'm going to click and hold right here, and then I get to see the layers of my environment. So I'm going to go down to Mixer. This is all the stuff that I've created so far in my Arrange window. It's being held in this little pattern in the Environment window. Whenever you create a track in the Arrange window, it automatically creates these objects in your Environment window without you really having to think about it. But let's say, uh, for instance, let's say I needed uh, an arpeggiator. You know, all these other programs have arpeggiators. Why not Logic? Well, if I go to New, Arpeggiator, I get a little arpeggiator. Basically what I'll do is I'll take the output of that arpeggiator and I'll run it directly into the EVP88. Okay, I just drag that cable over the EVP88 and it automatically connected it. So right now in the arrange window, by the rules that we're following from what we talked about before, right now the MIDI is not going into the arpeggiator first. It's going to the EVP88 first because the EVP88 is what's chosen in the track list, right? Okay, so in order to get the MIDI through this arpeggiator and into the EVP88, we actually have to select this arpeggiator in the Arrange window. So I'm going to go back to the Arrange window. How do I do that? Well, if I control, I can control click and reassign the track object to Mixer, Software Instrument, EVP88 or I can go, that's actually not what I wanted to do, Mixer, and then, hey, Arpeggiator, there we go. Okay, so now, according to the way that our MIDI is routed in Logic, the MIDI comes in through my physical input, remember that? Physical input, move my click and ports layer, comes into my physical input, travels along this cable into the sequencer input. Now where does it go from there? It goes to the arrange window, right? In the Arrange window, it hits the Arpeggiator. Now, where does the MIDI go from there? Well, we connected our Arpeggiator. To the EVP88. So right now, if I hit the keys, I'm still playing the EVP88. But remember the signal flow, okay? Because that's what this is all about. It's signal flow. So the MIDI is going into the arpeggiator, which goes into the EVP88. Now, it's not going to be able to arpeggiate it until it gets some kind of timing. So check it out. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to turn the cycle mode off. And let's see. I'm going to open up the parameters for the arpeggiator. And yeah, eighth notes, that should be OK. So when I hit play, what's going to happen is that sets the arpeggiator into motion. Okay, so it's arpeggiating right now. Sorry about the jump in volume. So that's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's arpeggiating. So now I want to record. So I'll go into record. So then what happened is I recorded my arpeggiator track, right? Cool. Well, check this out. If I double click on it, oh, it doesn't actually show the arpeggiated notes, does it? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't show the arpeggiated notes. It just shows the chords that I was playing. Because the essence of an arpeggiator is that I play a chord and it arpeggiates it, right? Well, that's not quite what I want. What I want. I want the arpeggiator to, when I record on that track, um, I, I want it to look arpeggiated. I want my notes to be arpeggiated, right? Well, here's where we have to go back to signal flow, okay? Because the arpeggiator track, when I hold down a chord, then all it's going to be able to recognize are the chords, okay? I hold down a chord on the keyboard, it records a chord, okay? So now, in order to get the MIDI flow, the MIDI signal flow correct, to be able to record the arpeggiated notes, okay? When I say the arpeggiated notes, 
It's not going to look like this. It's not going to be a big stack of notes. It's going to be the notes followed uh, sequential, sequentially after each other, up and down, or up in this case. Okay, so what do I do? Hmm. Well, what I usually do is as part of my template in my environment window, I don't even bother connecting an arpeggiator directly to my instrument. Because in order to do that, I would have to create an arpeggiator every time I wanted to arpeggiate. So what I do is I go back up here to click Imports, and I remember my signal flow. Okay, the MIDI comes in here. And what if I interrupt it before it hits here? Okay, well, let me try that. I'm going to erase this cable, and I'm going to go New. I'm going to say Arpeggiator. And check this out. I go from the sum to the arpeggiator, the arpeggiator out to the sequencer input. So here's what happens. Anything that I select in the arrange window, I'm going to go back to the arrange window because we know that this is sending to the arrange window. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say new software instrument. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this arpeggiator track. Here's what's going to happen. When I hit record, it's going to record the arpeggiated notes. All right, so I'm going to open that up. There they are, the arpeggiated notes. Now, hopefully I have enough time to show you the last step, because, of course, we don't want everything arpeggiated, right? And we don't want to have to manually cable it up every time that we want to do this. So what I'll do is I'll go to New, Fader, and I'll use something called a Cable Switcher. Cable Switcher, one goes directly to the sequencer input, and one goes to the arpeggiator, which goes to the sequencer input. And I take the sum out and go into the cable switcher. So now, if I click this cable switcher, what happens is 0 is going to be directly to the sequencer input, and 1 goes to the arpeggiator. So, if I hit play, there it's not arpeggiating, right? Okay, now I'm going to go here and I'm going to click the cable switcher. I'll switch it back. Okay, now I wasn't recording. So that's how the MIDI signal flow works in Logic. It's extremely important. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but this was one of the more difficult things about Logic to understand. Yet, if you understand it, you will have a very powerful understanding of Logic. Alright, there you go. It's the tip of the iceberg, but it's some of the scary stuff. Um, but that's why I'm here. I'm giving you guys the advanced stuff and uh, trying to give you a deeper understanding of what's going on with the program. Alright, uh, until our next cartoon, take care. Ciao.